Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Holy One of Israel. Oh, Father, you took the fall and thought of us. Above all, above all, above all, you took the fall. And you thought of us above all. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Great and faithful is the Holy One of Israel. Our Lord, our God, our Savior, and our King. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is our everything. Great and faithful is our God. Mighty is our Lord, and glorious is our King. He is the ruler of everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you are our great God. You are our wonderful, awesome, magnificent, absolutely, hallelujah, praiseworthy God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, O Lord. Father, we bless you. We honor and adore you. We thank you today for your goodness and mercy towards us. Thank you, O great and sovereign God, that this is truly a day that you have made and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, as your people gather this afternoon for the breaking or the, 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 the continuation of our desire for our relationship with you to grow, to expand, to enlarge, to increase, we thank you, O great and sovereign Father, that your hand is upon us to keep us from harm and danger, to keep us in the place where we need to be, to expand our territories and enlarge our borders. We thank you, Lord, that more and more of your spirit is being poured into us, that we might flourish, that we might increase, that we might expand, that we might become anointed sons that you can trust. Have your way in us and through us, O God. Have your way in every element and aspect of our lives. Have your way, O God. And we give you all praise, all honor, and all glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, family. And welcome, 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 welcome to another Tuesday afternoon breaking of our fast solidifying who we are in god and who god is in us and there is no greater no greater word there might be some that are similar many that are similar but there is no greater word that connects us to god than genesis 1 27 26 27 and uh and psalm 8 from 3 2 8 these are solid words that remind us of the magnitude of our power the magnitude of our anointing the magnitude hallelujah the magnitude of who we are in God and who we are by God in the name of Jesus Christ and so we jump right into this word of encouragement this word of revelation this word that we need to manifest in and through us that we might flourish that we might prosper that we might go forth and be and do with invincible power and anointing from the god of all creation hallelujah hallelujah so we go back again to verse 3 of psalm 8 and it says when i consider and so the word of god is saying david is saying when i david consider when you, Patricia Smith Golson, consider, when you, Judith Hall, when you, Shereen, when you, Donna Sinclair, when you, Lynette, when you have considered, hallelujah, come on now, you, the heavens, when you consider the heavens, the magnificent work of the fingers of God, hallelujah, the moon and the stars, what do we do? We look at it and we say, which you have set in place when we consider when we meds on it when we think about it when you look up the word consider in the in the uh in the dictionary yes in the king james version of the dictionary it says to affix to fix the mind on with a view to carefully examine to fix the mind on with a view to carefully examine what does that mean it's like you you take a, a um a scope a, 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 not a stethoscope ron <laughs> i praise jesus you take one of those um 
long viewing lens, not a binoculars, something that sees much, much further. You know what I'm talking. They look into it and they stargaze and look at the moon and it brings the moon close and all these things. And when you take one of those and go up on the roof or on your balcony in the night on a clear sky day, a clear sky night, sorry, and you begin to look and examine and you look at the moon and you get a close up and you look at the stars and you get a close up through these lens and you say, wow, look at the magnificent millions and millions of miles away. And yet we see it as if it's right at our fingertip. Uh, the wise men were able to see and follow the star. Yes, a telescope. You go, Joy. You get a thumbs up. Oh, Patricia Antipas said it too. Everybody know the telescope. That's correct. Hallelujah. And so when we look through the telescope of our spirit and we see the magnificence of God. Come on, somebody. Your spirit started to tingle already. When you recognize how good God has been, is there anyone that is on here this afternoon that have not looked through the telescope of their lives and seen the magnificence of God in our lives? What God has done when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me when I meds or meditate or ponder on or consider the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me my heart cries out hallelujah thank God for saving me and so David when he looked in the stars he meditated he set his heart his eyes his mind his will his soul his emotions and he looked with magnificent awe and he says what when I look at the work of the fingers of God, I can do nothing but be amazed. When I think of where God has taken some of us from, how can we be anything but amazed? How can we say anything but hallelujah? Oh, I was on the journey to become just like my father, but God intervened and he set me like a star among the heavens. He, he reduced that which was set for me by Satan and he transformed me into a new place, a new state. Come on, somebody. Is there anybody that can relate to where they were heading? When you look back now and you see what would have happened to you had it not been for the fingery work of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. When I think just simply, just simply, just a simple, simple thing, like me being on a different pathway, than Pastor Marsha. You wouldn't know me. I wouldn't even know how to preach. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be on, 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 on Facebook. I wouldn't know Pastor Marsha. Not even a little bit. Come on. So there are so many simple things that are so intricate and so strategic that God has created. And so we must often consider. We must often sit with our chin in our hands, whether like this or like this, and just hold our meds. Hold our, a consider on where God has taken us from, rather than complain, rather than spend so much time saying, God, what happened? Why haven't I seen what I'm supposed to see? Why haven't I received what I'm supposed to receive? Rather than that, just sit quietly, hold our meds, and say, God, when I think of where you have taken me from, I was a poor country girl in Jamaica, and now I am a successful businesswoman in America. I am honored and revered when they used to say that I would never make it, when it looked like I wasn't going to even graduate from high school. Look at me now, God, when I meds on the magnificence of your handiwork, how can I complain? I would be wicked. I must celebrate you. And so that's what it means, man. It says when you consider AA hey, hey, and set your mind to carefully examine what God has created, to think on with care, to ponder, to study, to meditate on how good God has been to each and every one of us. Oh, hallelujah. How good he has been. God has been better to us than how he has set the heavens in place. You know why? Because he did that once and forget it. He just fixed it and forgot it. Like Gorilla Glue. Oh, come on somebody. He just fixed the heavens. He set the moon and the sun and told them what to do. And they did that every single day since their creation. 
But we, he has had to be refixing daily. He has had to be recalibrating moment by moment. Oh, somebody need to get excited this afternoon. God has had to be repositioning us, re refashioning us. He has had to be breaking us down like clay and molding us up again every day and in different way. Oh, somebody need to get excited. And so we, unlike the stars, the heavens, the everything has given God way more work. And so who are we to complain? We should say, thank you, Jesus. That's why we're fasting from selfishness. We're fasting from unforgiveness. We're fasting from all the things, the anger, the frustration, all the things that, that, that makes us not. That's right. Take away our gratitude for the work that God has done. Because when we get angry at someone else, God could have gotten angry at us. When we are selfish towards others, God is unselfish to us. When we are unforgiving towards others, God is forgiving towards us us or oh, somebody should get excited today hallelujah that's why we have to fast from the things that are not of God because those things are things that God wants to change and transform in us on a day by day basis and so as handy, come on, when, 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 when David talks about it, he says, When I consider the heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of us? What is man that gives you more work every single day? Come on, Quenda, you know what you have been through, girl. You know the thoughts that you had. You know the things that you have said. You know the things that you have done. When you think of how good God is now and you think back to when you were Quenda, the girl out there, Hot like whoa, hand pan hip, snap, snap, snap. When you think of where you would have ended up had you died in that reality, had you died in that life, oh, your heart must cry out, Hallelujah! Thank God for saving me. Thank God that His handiwork wasn't finished with us. He wasn't finished when we were born. He consistently and continuously did a work to mold us and is still doing a work to mold us even today. Somebody should say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when we consider each day, we should make sure to consider who God is in our lives. The same God who set the stars, the moon, the sun, and the entire universe is the same God that created us and has continued to mold us. So we give God more work. Hallelujah. He doesn't even have the time for chicken to jerk. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so... Uh, we, we continue, it says, what is man that you are mindful of us? Now, if we consider, we are considering with our what? Our mind. And so, because God created, in us, created us in his image and likeness, if we have a mind, then so does God. Amen? Praise God. And so, what is man or who is man that you are mindful of us? Hallelujah. The word mindful there means attentive. It means regarding with care. Oh, hallelujah. That's why he works on us daily. That's why when we leave the 99, when we leave the crowd and go off wandering, go off looking man, go off looking money, go off looking house and care, go off looking satisfaction, go off looking for a fix for a high come on he leaves everybody else he puts them in the care of someone else hallelujah as a shepherd he puts the, the the sheep in the care of a dog or of his son and he comes after you he doesn't send someone after us he comes after us himself that's the kind of daddy he is that's the kind of shepherd he is he's mindful of us he's what regarding with care he's attentive he's bearing us in mind he is he what heedful he heeds our very cry so when we get to the edge of the cliff and it's a dark night and we are about to fall over we're about to fall into into a situation we're in that relationship we're in that house in that bed that we shouldn't be in and and, and he's hallelujah 
we're in that space and that place where we shouldn't be and, and, and we're saying we're laying there in the dark saying God how did I get here why am I doing this why am I in this position help God help he's not saying eh, you did that on your own you went there despite my saying you shouldn't go you went there despite knowing for a fact that that was wrong and that it would hurt me but you went anyway and so you're on your own get yourself out of that that trouble I am here to tell you today that because our God is mindful of us when we cry out even in the midst of sin when we are in the throes of a sinful act and we say Jesus this is not right I shouldn't be doing this Jesus forgive me he comes a running he doesn't come with condemnation he doesn't come by hesitation he doesn't come and repeat that what we have done is wrong like a hes like a recitation he comes and he says come my daughter come my son I have come to rescue you that's how we know he's mindful of us and so what am I saying? Yes, we can feel good about the fact that God is mindful of us. But God is mindful of us because he wants us to be mindful of others. Hallelujah. The world and, our, 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 and the kingdom of God is in the state that it is in today. Because though God has been mindful of us, though God has been forgiving of us, though God has been consistently, hallelujah, accepting our repentance, accepting our, our, our failings and our flaws, we have not been as just and as faithful to forgive others. We have not. That's why we must fast from that thing called unforgiveness because sometimes people fall into some situations and I'm not saying that there aren't circumstances under which you could make different decisions from, 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 from exposing yourself to a particular kind of thing but I'm saying that doesn't exclude forgiveness. It doesn't exclude not condemning someone. I was talking on the phone to someone yesterday and, and, and I was saying based on a position that certain church leaders have taken concerning certain issues, I wouldn't go and listen to them preach again. But it doesn't mean I have not forgiven them. I have forgiven them. I love them. I would do anything for them. I would go to them house and help them clean up and whatever. But when you go against, listen to me carefully, there's a difference between what someone does with you and for you and by you and all these things and what they do for God to you. Understand that when someone has contaminated God's word, hallelujah, when someone has contaminated God's word, when someone has aligned God's word to Satan, the Pharisees tried to align God's word with Satan. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, if, if, if I cast out devils by Beelzebub, by whom did your father, your fathers cast them out? Jesus said a, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. We as preachers of the gospel in particular, cannot be holding hands with Satan in terms of our word. Not sin now. I'm not talking about sin. Come on. A preacher can make a mistake. He can have extramarital affair. He can um, beat someone. He can say something bad to someone. It don't matter. You can name all the sins you can. And it's no issue. He can preach to me same way. That, that it's true. But when someone says, hear me carefully, when someone takes the word of God and liken it or match it to something that is demonic, that is satanic, and then wants me to come and sit under that spirit that caused, to, caused them to do that, that's not a mistake. That's a possession or an oppression. And someone who is oppressed, you should not allow to preach to you until they have been delivered. Because everything that is coming to you comes with a contaminated spirit. Or oh, somebody needs to hear me. So that's what I was talking about. I wasn't condemning them. I didn't say that they shouldn't preach. I just said I personally would not go and hear that person preach. That's just my opinion. But I love them the same way. I don't have anything against them. And so we have to know that there are some situations and circumstances. If someone is, is, is working witchcraft, but they are also in the clergy. But by night they work witchcraft and by day they are preaching the gospel. I personally would recommend or suggest that you don't go listen to that person preach. 
But I would also suggest that you love that person. Pray for them. Pray that they will come into truth, come into light, come into life. And turn. So you get the difference. You understand clearly. I, I, I've given you enough examples that you understand. That, that, that not, not condemning someone doesn't mean getting to in a relationship with them not condemning some a, a, a gentleman for doing something that he shouldn't do doesn't mean that you must marry him because you have forgiven him doesn't mean you must marry him if he has a, a, a girly problem if he has a problem with the females him can't stop but he's saying he loves you and he wants to marry you but he just keeps going out there and doing no you can forgive him and you can bless him and you can pray for him and you can forgive him and eat give him food to eat but don't marry him come on you got to understand amen yeah, that's right <laughs> evangelist albert said turn or get born that's the truth if you see the, 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 the outworkings down the line. So we have to be mindful. And so God himself was mindful of us. And he was forgiving of us. And he kept coming back for us. But the difference between what I said to you then and what I say to you now is that Jesus was the one that was chasing after us. He's the one that is perfect. He's the one that never says anything bad. Or does anything bad we are the ones that do and so we're the ones that and, and still he's saying we still have to say Lord forgive me he comes running after us but we still have to say Lord forgive me Lord I'm, I, I I turn and so when when they when David says who are we that you are mindful of us he's basically saying because we have done so much evil we have said so many things and done so many things wrong yet you are mindful of us. Praise God that he has a stomach that cannot get upset. Hallelujah. And <laughs> well, Marlon, if you never say that, Marlon say, and God not give born. <laughs> Praise God. That's right. When he commits to us, he commits to us exclusively. God commits to us exclusively. So he commits to Pastor Marsha exclusively. And when he commits to me exclusively, he's not giving her bond. Because God is able to give Pastor Marsha 100% of what she needs and still a reserve waiting that if she get hungry or greedy or, 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 or her container expands and she want more of him, he has it. It is not already given out to me or to Marlon or to Sonia or to Ex Exousia. Come on. He has more than enough to give each of us exclusively. Overflow. That's it, sister. Overflow is always available for God. So who is God that he's... Who are we that we are mind... God is mindful of us to give us overflow, to forgive us. We must know this so that we can repent and turn from our evil ways. He says... Hallelujah. And what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. He cares for us. He cares for us. Why does God care for us so much? Let me show you. Let me tell you. Turn. if you. Well, you don't have to turn there, but just listen to this. Hallelujah. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Because God has created us in his image, that's why he is mindful of us. Because we are him, him and he is us. Oh, I hope somebody is hearing me this afternoon. So when we fast, come on, from these things that we have asked you to fast from, we're fasting from these things because these things are not in the image and likeness of God. They are not part of who God is or who God desires us to be. And so those things must go so that we can begin to manifest more and more of God. And so I'm here to tell you today that the things that you are not seeing come to pass in your life, in your family, in your marriage, in your business, in your finances, in your health, 
maybe it is because there are too many things still in us that is not of God, that is not according to the image and likeness of God. And as those things go, as those things get plucked out, as those things get thrown away, as those things become pure like the stars and the moon and the sun that are permanent and faithful and are always in the same position, never moving, giving light the same way. When our lives begin to show consistency and persistency, when our light begins to shine that men may see it and glorify our Father who art in heaven, then and only then will you see the magnificence of God clearing the way and making a way where there seems to be no way. Oh my God. So as we fast, people of God, let us fast with a steadfast mind. Let us fast with a focus. Let us fast mindful that we are created in the image and likeness of God. Let us fast with a confidence as we consider that God has made us to be as perfect as the sun, the moon, and the stars. Why? Because he who fashioned those and, let, and set them perfect and they have not changed for hundreds of thousands of years is the same God with the same hand that fashioned and formed us in his limit, image and likeness. It means that we were created to create things in the same way that he did. What have you created? What have I created? What can we still create? Let's go create because we are gods. We are created in the image and likeness to go create things as God created from his image and his likeness. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. He has made us awesome. He has made us to do great things. He has made us to take dominion over everything, to call for that which is not as though it were. God is faithful. If we get it, if we come into the full understanding of who we are and what we're able to do, nothing shall be impossible for me or for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Each day, let's practice. Speak to our circumstances. Speak to our marriage. Speak to our business. Speak to our children. Speak to our, our health. Speak to our finances. Speak to our circumstances around us, no matter what they are. Practice to be a God over your circumstance. Because when the God in whose image and likeness we are created speaks to anything, it responds the way he wants them to respond. Amen. They're supposed to respond to us too because we're creating this image and likeness, both me and you. Hi. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. I hope you are inspired. I hope you are turned up. I hope the fire is up under you so that you can get ready to run like a steam engine. The steam is bubbling up inside of you and you are ready to go and take on the world hallelujah one moment at a time one situation at a time begin in your house in your space in your circumstances and watch god watch god not no god outside of you but watch the god that is inside of you in his image and likeness where we created to do great things Let's do some great things, man. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we confirm that word this afternoon. Hallelujah. With uh, our communion, because the image and likeness of God is confirmed daily by the renewing of our covenant, his body and his blood. Ours must decrease and he must increase in us. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you for your love, for your blessings, for your favor towards us. We thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you have made and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, that we win it. And now we confirm this victory with eating your body and drinking your blood. Sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now that they might be to our bodies strength, healing, wholeness, prosperity, good success. And that your blood can be to us new life created in your image and likeness. That when we consider, we will be happy to know why you are mindful of us. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he gave it to the disciples and he said, Drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of this blood, you do it in remembrance of me. As you eat my body and drink my blood, says the Lord, you do it in remembrance of my death, burial, and resurrection until he I come. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Sister Annie, I haven't seen your name in a little while. I was wondering if you um, if you went off on vacation. Praise God. We bless God for you and we bless God for Guyana. May the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow be upon your household. Hallelujah. Today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life. We send greetings and blessings from all of the kingdom citizens of the great I am that I am to you and to your country in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, girl. Hey, big heart and big hug. Hallelujah. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go forth, family, and have an amazing rest of the day. For God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way. I hope this little meal, this little lunchtime break was a good inspiration to your soul and to your spirit. And so you can go forth with a, a, enjoying the rest of this day. Amen. Praise God. Love you guys. Thank you for your faithfulness. We appreciate you so much. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade and Rowan Wade saying, oops, two thumbs up. Amen. Bless you. Bye guys. See you in the morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Blessings. Plenty love. Plenty love.